Good evening, explorers. This is Jason here. I've been meaning to get this video out for a while now. Uh, some of you haven't had a chance to really have a look at the Google Glass Enterprise Edition, and I wanted to go through some of the details of what they've changed with this new device. The first major difference that you'll see is that the Enterprise Edition actually folds up like a pair of sunglasses. They've added two hinge points both in the device itself and in the frames that attach to it to give it a little bit more flexibility for being a little more compact when you fold it up, put it away for storing it and charging it. They have revamped the photo button on top to actually be an integrated part of the hinge. This circle here is the actual button to depress to take a photo like you would have seen on the Explorer Edition for the manual component to take a photo. They have increased the overall size of the prism, but the actual display portion is the same. The Explorer Edition was shifted over a little bit more to be just above the center of the right side of the eye. And now, to the average user, I believe it is meant to be a little more centered. As you can see, this portion here is extended a little bit further out, but the overall size of the display remains the same. They did change how you adjust the angle of the prism itself, and I don't know if I'm a fan. You actually have to grab the prism itself to hinge it inward or outward, and as you can see, you're kind of getting the prism dirty. Now, maybe that's okay, the top and bottom really doesn't matter, but I'm a little nervous just touching the prism myself. We'll see how long-term effects, what impact they have. One of the other aspects they changed is no longer do you have a micro USB port in the bottom, but they've got this little magnetic latch with a custom-made USB cable. It's really not going over well, I think, even amongst our partners, because the only way you can charge the device is with this cable. And while it's cool that it snaps into place, you can see there's still quite a lot of play in the cable itself with a slight adjustment. If you were to try to wear a battery pack or do any kind of an umbilical to another device, that's going to come off real easy. If you're wearing the device, there's going to have to be some kind of a change or a different apparatus for that to connect. This is just not going to work. Overall, the lenses, if you had them for the Explore Edition, are still going to be interchangeable. They did increase the rigidity of the frame. I know there was an issue. If you see most of the pictures of people are wearing it, the device itself tends to tilt or list a little bit towards the glass side of the equation, these frames fit a lot better. And so even when I'm wearing them and put them on, the photos you take are going to be almost perfectly level. I know with the Explorer Edition, I've always had to manually lift up on the device before I take my photo to make sure it fits level with the landscape. They relocated the power button from the inside of the device to the back. Uh, this way you can actually interact with the device while you're wearing it without it to take it off. Probably a lot better from a usability standpoint. They did remove the bone speaker on the frames themselves. While I guess I'll cover that a little bit later in the Enterprise discussion, it didn't work because there was sizing issues with the frames. If you did have a good experience with the bone conductor speaker, it was incredible. You could hear what was being said pretty much in any environment. However, due to the sizing issues with the, I'll say the Explore Edition frames being way too forgiving and probably too plasticky. It didn't work out so well for everyone. I think they got a lot of negative feedback that really should, wasn't because of the bone speaker's fault because of the fit. So we'll see. One of the primary areas of concern people have asked about is what did they do with the prism? Will it still foil? While I can't say specifically what measures were taken to protect it, it does appear that they have added almost I'll say a perimeter sealant of some kind on the outside. The main component of the foil appears to be the same, but they did appear to take some kind of precautions to prevent it from coming off. I don't know how effective it'll be long term, but at least they took some kind of measure to protect it. It's still hanging out there to get banged up, but if they're expecting people to use this in a production manufacturing environment, they must have some level of confidence that they've made changes for it. I have yet to see it even remotely buckle, but it's too new of a device to really tell in the long term. I mentioned that the frames were vastly different. They're actually interchangeable. There is a levered mechanism that, hopefully the detail can come on clear enough. As you can see, there's these metallic teeth on the bottom that this triangular shaped component literally just fits onto and twists. So you set the device on in place and then twist it forward. It does seem to fit pretty snug, so pretty good design. Kudos for that one. However, when you do fold it up, there's really no limiter on this hinge at all. So it's very easy to fold it up and almost come too close to be, start maybe damaging the prism from the front. I'm 
almost worried about this actually causing damage to the prism itself if you don't package it correctly. So be careful when you're handling it. 